React 18 is out at long last. What are the new features of this new version? Should you update your code now? How should you do it? And what are the problems you might encounter? Let's start with the last question. Upgrading to React 18 in progress. Let's start by getting our hands dirty. I've got an old repository that I set up when I first did the React tutorial. The repository dates back to a pre-hooks version of React 16, and we're going to use this as an example. This allows to see what happens when we update React from version 16 to 18. Uh, spoiler alert, it's fast and it's painless. And that was kind of the whole point of the featureless update that was React 17. Let's see what happens in practice. To start out, if we're under npm, we'll run npm install React 18.0.0 and React DOM 18.0.0. And if we're using yarn, we'll run yarn add react 18.0.0, react dom 18.0.0. And the update goes smoothly. And when I launch a project using the yarn start, in my case, everything seems to be working just fine. But if we open the console, we see the following message. React dom render is no longer supported in React 18. Use create root instead. Until you switch the new API, your app will behave as if it's running React 17. What does this mean? It means actually two things. The first thing is that the React team has deprecated the code that initializes React. That code is no longer the right way to do things if you want to take advantage of React's new features. The second thing is that React handles deprecation nicely. Sure, my initialization is not ideal, but React is not going to cause me any grief. My code still works without any problems, as you can see. So how do I fix this issue? If we look at my code, the import and the initialization sections read import React DOM from React DOM. And then lower down, we have a const root element equals document get element by ID root. And then an if root element React DOM dot render of the app with the root element. The initialization method has changed, as has the import. Now, in React 18, we need to import the client-side version of React DOM by doing import React DOM from React DOM slash client. This is due to the existence of a server-side version of this bit of code, of this functionality. And the initialization is now done in two steps. First, we do const root equals React DOM create root with the root element and then root.render of the app component. The setup is now split into two steps to differentiate client-side and server-side operations and to allow us, if we want to hydrate on the root instead of just doing a render. Now, if we just do these two changes, my editor spits out a TypeScript error. If you're using TypeScript, you'll also need to update the types by doing yarn add types slash React 18.0.0 and types React DOM 18.0.0. Now, once these small fixes are done, everything runs without any problem. So basically, you can update React to version 18 without any particular worries. But is there any point in doing so? Let's talk about what React 18 brings to the table. So let's talk about what's new in React 18. And the reality is that there are few visible changes, more so than in the featureless update that was React 17. But still, here in version 18, we see that the React team is working hand in hand with the next JS teams and to a lesser extent with Remix. Because truth be said, you and I won't be using most of the new features in our code. Instead, we'll be using third party libraries or frameworks that call on this code. But let's talk about the improvements that could have a significant effect. First of all, there's the notion of automatic render batching. What does that mean? Let's imagine we're managing two states. One, for example, represents a score, and the second represents available actions for the user, for the player. The user taking an action will increase the score and reduce available actions. So far, so good. So in our code, we'll write something like set score, score plus one, and set actions, actions minus one. Fairly basic. In other words, we're updating the state twice. And up until now, React would detect two separate state updates and trigger two renders. But React 18 introduces the notion of automatic batching, grouping of render tasks. Despite the two state updates, the app will re-render only once. And that's worth making the most of. Although I don't know how many of you have actually experienced performance problems 
in React. And in theory, this sparse usefulness will be even more the case for other new features. So let's take a look at them. First of all, we have concurrent mode. To frame things in simple terms, it's about breaking the rendering monolith. It's a case of saying, look, this calculation for that part of the UI, we can defer that to later when we have available computing power. That piece of UI can use an old value while it's waiting. For that, there's the notion of transition, which embodies a non-urgent change. Let's take the case of a filtered list. The user starts typing text in the filter, and then they expect the interface to immediately display the type text and the list to show that a filtering is taking place. But the user understands if it takes a few seconds to display the filtered results. So for the same action, we have two distinct reactions. We have one urgent reaction and a non-urgent reaction. This non-urgent reaction is what the React team calls a transition. So now, in the new version of React 18, we have access to a hook called use transition and a function called start transition that embody this. But as the blog post announcing the release of React 18 says, we expect the main way you'll add concurrency to your app is by using a, con a concurrent enabled library or framework. In most cases, you won't interact with concurrent APIs directly. And this is even more true for our next topic which is server-side rendering. Server-side rendering and streaming, which are still a work in progress, are intended for frameworks like Next.js or Remix. You likely won't have any direct use for this feature unless you're building a server-side framework of your own, of course. But this feature promises great things for Next.js and for Remix, which brings me to my next point, to my conclusion. Should we upgrade to React 18? The answer is actually yes, not because it will revolutionize anything in our code, but because there's no good reason not to, since it's so painless. If your applications are computationally intensive, the new features will come in useful. Even simple applications can profit from the different optimizations that the React team has set up. The real benefit, though, will be via libraries like React Router and frameworks like Next.js or Remix. They'll make use of React 18's new features, and in doing so, they'll offer improvements in user and developer experience that it would be a shame to miss. So to take advantage of React 18, I recommend you actually use Next.js or the Remix frameworks if you can. And if you want to learn how, if you want to learn more, well, I'll see you in the next video.